precious Sanko. Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. So I had a really fantastic reading week this week. I think I read a total of seven books, which was one a day, which I'm really happy with because I work this week. So, I mean, I really, I work every week. <laughs> Man, I need a vacation. But yeah, so let's talk about these books. So the first book that I picked up this week was Between Two Fires by Mark Nose. This is a historical fiction. I believe it's technically an adult. I don't know. The perspective is from like kind of a teenager, but yeah. So our main character is living in Wales and it's not like a uni unified country. It's, you know, 15, actually does specify 15, yeah, or sorry, not 15, 597. So it's all these just scattered kingdoms and she is the daughter of one of the rulers of one of the kingdoms and they have been forever rivaling with another com uh, community so her father marries her off to this other king and she things are not great from the get-go and she finds out that you know she thought her father was cruel and not great to her and her husband is really not going to be much of a step up so she takes things into her own hands and there's kind of several other kingdoms that get involved from there. It's quite interesting. She ends up... Well, I don't want to say that because I'll spoil it. But, I mean, it was interesting. I think that, like, I liked the romance that she has because she's forced into so many different things that it was nice to see that she can have those independent thoughts and kind of follow through on them. I also really enjoyed most of, like, the battle scenes and all of the politics stuff, that there was lots of politics. I still did find that there were some large chunks where... It really, really dragged, like, like, it's not a big book, but it felt like there were parts that were just kind of unnecessary, or you were, like, you could have, like, added some maybe personal notes in here, or some drama to make it a little bit more exciting. So I think in the end I gave it, like, a 3.75 or 4 out of 5 stars, and I actually found out this is not a standalone. I thought it was a standalone. I guess there's going to be another one, or has been another one that's come out, so I'm debating. I think I might... Borrow that from the library and see if I like it. Then, I'm so happy I read this book. <laughs> Thunderhead by Niall Schusterman. This was better than the first book. Oh my good lord. And I loved the first book, Scythe. So, it kind of picks up the same characters of the first book. It ends with a big bang, shall we say. And the main male character is doing something. Um, whereas, I mean, female characters. But they are kind of keeping in contact. And... There, if you read the first book too, you'll know there's tons of inner turmoil and essentially a power grad and a shift from good to evil, which may mimic some current political things going on in our world. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just overthinking this, but I feel like it was pretty blatantly obvious. But, oh, so instead of in the first book, there's a lot of influences, dialogue, perspective of Thunderhead. And Thunderhead is essentially like an AI system. It kind of reminded me of Aiden from Illuminae Files. And he's not as, like, killery as... Well, that's not probably true. He... <laughs> I don't know. He's just... He's not identical. Like, he, he has morals, but he bases things off of the information that he's been given by humans in the past. And we find out that there's been a big black spot of information that he was not given. And he finds out. And, oh my god, the political betrayal and the being brought back to lifeness and, oh, and the black spot, like, kind of Bermuda Triangle situation. It's just so good. Oh my good lord. The plot was so good. The relationships were so good. The betrayals were, like, nonstop. I loved getting the perspective of Thunderhead constantly. The ending hurt my soul. Like, I, I, I think I put this in my review. If Niall Schusterman and Jay Kristoff aren't friends and don't have a group chat with, like, Amy Kaufman about how they laugh maniacally about killing people when they leave them with cliffhangers, then that is a missed opportunity because they be they should be BFFs. I just need that to be known. But there, he's, he's a rat bastard. They, I can't believe you would end a book like this. Well, I, I know you should because it was a really good ending. But I really, really need the third book. I think it's called The Toll. I know it's supposed to come out in 2019, but I can't wait that long. So, five out of five stars. Then I picked up Cadaver and Queen by Alyssa Quitney. This was a very interesting book. It kind of reminded me a little bit of A Madness So Discreet, not like the abuse part of A Madness So Discreet, but like kind of the setting and 
the perspective as well as stalking Jack the Ripper a little bit. So we follow our main character who's been, she, her father's dead, but she wants to go into medicine and it's during Victorian era, so not going to happen. But she gets accepted into this academy, but she shows up and some of the professors want her there and some of them don't. And the ones that don't have been shunning her, like removing her and making it not possible for her to do like class assignments because of her, her gentle demeanor as a woman, which made me want to slap some characters. But there's lots of like Frankenstein-y science stuff going on. And there's a, a good romance as well. It was, I don't know if insta-love is the right word. I just thought it was really cool because it's kind of like a star-crossed kind of situation. It's very weird, but I actually really enjoyed it. And I wasn't sure who was good or bad for most of this book, which was really, really interesting. I thought this would have been cool to make it maybe a little, it's not super big, maybe make it a little bit longer so I got to know the characters a bit more. I feel like maybe the character development was a little bit rushed. But, or maybe not rushed, just underdone. So, I mean, I think I ended up giving this like a four out of five stars. It was pretty fun, actually. I'm glad I own it. The cover's really cool. And as you may be able to tell, some of that Frankenstein-y stuff has to do with the queen. So, it's very weird and very cool and very random. And I don't exactly know how to describe it. So, just read it. This week I also finally finished The Beast That Has Drums of Autumn. This is the fourth book in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. There's Outlander, Dragonfly and Ember, Voyager, and then Drums of Autumn. I'm trying to get myself to remember the order of them. I know the names, but I constantly forget the order. So this follows Claire and Jamie once they are in North America. I'm not going to say where in North America, but they kind of set up, a, set up a homestead. It's during like, you know, this whole North America is just kind of being discovered and settled and taken all the land from the people who already lived here. And I, I'm really curious to see this adapted, actually, for the TV show, because also we got the date of November 4th, I think it is, and the trailer for Outlander the next season. I'm so excited. But I'm also, I also have a friend who's an Indigenous actor, and uh, we found out that they had a calling, um, like a cast call, for Canadian Indigenous actors. So I was really curious about that. I'm just terrified that the representation is going to be bad. There's a decent amount of Indigenous characters. They're not main characters for the most part. It's a lot of background and setting information of the New World and settler relationships with them and, you know, religious conversion and all that stuff that happened. And... I found it really, like, I liked that that was done, and I don't think I saw anything, like, immensely problematic. This book is a little bit older, but, like, there, the only thing that you were like, eh, was the terminology, but that's terminology that they use. Like, we can't, <laughs> can't go in a time, well, well, I shouldn't say that in this book, we can't go in a time machine. Um, you know, we can't go back. Like, they still refer to them as savages sometimes. That's just, like, historical language. But I liked actually that Claire and Jamie and their family got to know this community rather than like ostracizing them. They became fairly well acquainted with them and very commonly interacted with them and traded with them and helped each other, which I thought was really awesomely done. Especially, I, I mean, I've read this book before, but I think just like knowing, having the lens that I have now versus when I originally read it, I, I like that. And I feel like I'm just scared that the TV show's not going to do well <laughs> Well, on that aspect of it. I don't think I'm going to give an Outlander book under five stars, to be totally honest. Then I whipped through The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. This is the first book in a series. I thought it was a standalone to begin with, but it is at least a duology. And oh my god, I'm so excited for the sequel. So you might be able to tell from like the cover, there are five main characters. There's a couple royals, there's some kind of misfits, and then there's some guards. And this is in a very like patriarchal society, like hardcore, like women are not allowed to look across the room at a dude. And uh, one of our main characters is a princess. She is betrothed to the king of a different kingdom. And her father's kingdom and that betrothed kingdom have a long-standing rivalry. You may notice this happens an awful lot in YA. But she also has a thing for her guard. And her brothers continuous, and her father continuously accuse her of being, like, a whore. And, like, cheating. And, like, not being faithful. And even though they've only ever, like, looked across a room at each other and once touched hands or something like that. But, so she is sent off to this betrothed kingdom by her aggressive, I feel like is the understatement of the year, brother and she goes there and at the same time the guy that they think her her guard that they think she's you know hooking up with is essentially cast out and then we have all these kind of other characters who are 
there's like demon hunting and when you kill a demon you would get the smoke and essentially smoke was a drug and you're not supposed to have it in these kingdoms but people do i mean that's drugs 101 and then we have another character who finds out that you know he maybe have some royal connections um but things go very very haywire and chaotic when our main female character is set up in this patrol kingdom and finds out that her father's attacking the kingdom and chaos ensues i guess is the easiest most non-spoilery way i really liked the ending i think the main female character grew an awful lot she was very timid and just took whatever was coming at her in her in the beginning especially being in her father's kingdom whereas when she goes to this patrol's kingdom they are considered more liberal i mean it's actually said in there that they're more liberal and she really does take advantage of that and she slowly starts kind of testing the waters to see how far she can get to the point where she almost goes like full Khaleesi and gets her like own people. And it's really, really cool. And I liked that. So I'm excited for that. I'm curious to see where the romance is going to go too. Like it's not really insta love. There was like love before the book. So I kind of liked that part. And that it wasn't like, I don't know. I have a feeling there's going to be a triangle developing in here very quickly. Or someone is too good to be true. That's all I got to say. So yeah. I think it's like a four and a half, if not five out of five stars. Really, really fun. And I'm excited for the sequel. On the day that it came out, I also read Light Mage by Laurie Forrest. This, I mean, it's technically a novella, but it's still like a full-size book. Let's be real. It's the story of Sage in the Black Witch Chronicle. So it's, I think it's book 1.5. So yeah, so the we had Wand Fasted, then the Black Witch was the first full novel, then Light Mage, and then Iron Flower, which comes out in September, I want to say. So yeah, so we get the story. We've had tidbits of Sage. And just from the perspective of L of L in, in the original, not the original, in the other books, about how she's kind of in the background and when her things come up, the political and racial things that she's, wars essentially that she's been involved in. So we get the perspective of Sage. So we know from the other stories that, you know, she was wand fasted by force by her parents to some guy. The guy was abusive and not great. And she ran away and was pregnant with someone else's child. And the other person is not a gardenarian. So, like, double billion strikes against Sage at this point. She's been abandoned by her family, and they're searching for her and the child, because the child, they believe, is one of a prophecy that is supposed to take down the gardenarians. So, that is where we go. <laughs> it was really good. Sage is a character that I'm so, so curious about, just because all of the things that she did started and kind of launched where Ellerin was going. Like, Ellerin didn't really have much... Every of a choice in the other books like things were already in motion and a lot of it not all of it was sages doing but people the things that sage did made people reevaluate gardenarian girls and women for sure so i read light mage it was so so good imagine living in a world crazy i know but a world where women are accused of lying and seducing men when they claim assault and then are peer pressured into being financially dependent on other people and are told that they just can't have sex and never told how contraception works and then they have an uns a surprise child shall we say imagine a crazy world like that yeah so once again a bunch of the things and messed up parts of our world are definitely included in light mage and yeah i love this book it was so good i was through it I actually emailed Lori for, or messaged Lori Forrest after. Uh, apparently it was the first review she got because I literally read it on the day it came out and I have no self-control. So, five out of five stars. And last but not least, I read Stalking Jack, well, reread Stalking Jack, Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third time I think I've read this book and I'm pre-read, or not pre-reading, re-reading the first two books because the third book comes out soon. I remember reading this book the first time being like, meh, it was all right. And then the second book was like, this is awesome. And the third time, I'm like, I love this book so much. I also love, like, because it's a mystery, but, like, obviously I've read it several times that I know how the mystery is going to end. And, like, I remember the first time being like, oh, it's the dad. It's so the dad. Oh, I wonder how, oh, I bet you the uncle's in on this somehow, too. And then it came out of left field of who actually was. Don't want to spoil it. But now I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh, you sweet summer child. Oh, honey. Honey, no, you're not paying attention. <laughs> I like having that holy than that attitude about a fictional character on a book that I've read twice. <laughs> but it follows our main character, Audrey Rose, who works unofficially for or with her uncle as kind of the mortician. And it is the time when Stalking Jack the Ripper attacks, or not Stalking, 
when Jack the Ripper's attacks begin. And they, for several reasons that are explained throughout the book, there's a couple uh, assumptions as to who Jack the Ripper is, and a lot of them have connections with Audrey Rose. And she works with one of her uncle's uh, science students, Thomas, to try and solve the case. And Thomas is adorable, and he constantly hits on her, and it's hilarious how uncomfortable she is and doesn't know what to do. It's a suppressed woman in Victorian-era society. And, oh, it was just so good. I really liked at the ending, the dad really does seem to come around. And I just, I'm excited to reread the second book. It was really, really good. And I still, every time I read this, it honestly infuriates me that we don't know who that guy was. There's so many theories. I'm all just like, could we just like, I don't know, raise the dead and just ask people and then put them back to dead? Like, I just need to know. It really bothers me. <laughs> I don't know that raising the dead has ever proven to be a good idea. Eh, probably not. So those are all the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read this week. I would love to hear and if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to their Goodreads pages and I will link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.